All right. So, I mean, UFC class action lawsuit. We got some news regarding this. Um, you know, it was recently certified, right, Pat? I mean, tell tell me more, man. You're the expert on this stuff. So, what what exactly does all this mean? This recent news of um, you know, the legal matters with fighters going against the UFC. Um, Dana apparently knows nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting, right? So, so we're talking about the antitrust lawsuit that was brought six years ago by fighters Kung Lee. Nate Quarry, John Fitch, as well as a bunch of others, but those are the bigger guys, um, who are essentially saying that the UFC had monopoly power, which isn't quite monopoly power, but similar effects of saying, hey, I couldn't go get a fair share of the market because there wasn't a competitive market because the UFC had us under long-term contracts, scooped the best possible fighters, bought out promotions like Strike Force and Pride so that they couldn't compete with us. So I didn't have options. And you've got to pay me more because of that because as we know from the lawsuit and especially the evidentiary hearings that happened last year, we know that the UFC's revenue share is closer to you know anywhere from... 11 to 20 percent that's a wide range but i'm just going wide and big here depending on specifics it narrows but you know 15 20 percent we'll say uh, and most sports are, are closer to 40 to 50 right so throughout this whole process what we've heard throughout the evidentiary hearings and what's going on right now it's been six years mind you and all that we've been trying to do first is get the decision on whether or not it would be class certified what that means is, is, is it a class action lawsuit or is it I as a fighter have to go and sue individually? So if you've ever gotten something in the mail that's like, hey, guess what? You're part of a class action lawsuit because uh, so-and-so tires were made faulty and we found out that they were BS and they were put on your car. If you want to opt out, do this. Otherwise, we'll send you a check for like 20 bucks in you know three years or something like that. You get things in the mail about this occasionally. That's what this is, is the judge said, you know what, this is a entire class that I'm going to certify, which means that if you fought between 2010 to 2017, you are in that class unless you opt out. You can opt out and say, you know, what? I don't want to be a part of this. I'm good. But otherwise, you're going to be counted in that class action lawsuit. This is an important step because without it, this lawsuit would have been dead, right? The, the past several years has been a lot of juggling and trying to figure out, you know, can we even move forward with this? How are we going to go after this? Because you had competing lawsuits at one point. It's all been narrowed down to this one lawsuit now. And without class certification, it, it's dead in the water. That's it. It's over. With class certification, it can now move forward. So what we got uh, this past week was Judge Bullware saying, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and class certify that. And it can move forward. Well, so I mean, do you think that this what does this mean for, you know, the potential of uh, unionization? Because that's really, I think, you know, what everybody always thinks of in terms of this this kind of thing. And, you know, especially for those who aren't paying as much attention, because people seem to know more about the idea of unions because every other sport has them. Right. 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 And so that's a great question, because this doesn't really move the unionization effort forward at all. It's one of those things where. Let's say we, we're at, we're very early on. Right now, the UFC is going to challenge this to the appellate court, and then it and the appellate court, from what I'm reading, could then kick it back down to the local courts. You could basically, uh, skipping all the details, it could be another three to five years before we even get to the, the trial part of this, which is insanity. That'd be 11 years in the legal system. Boy. <laughs> uh, so yes. So, um, you know, this is the very first step. But in terms of unionization, this really doesn't do anything moving forward because it's from a past time, right? This is basically, if, you, if they go all the way to trial and let's say that they get a bunch of money in damages, that's for fighters that fought between 2010 and 2017. Doesn't affect any fighter going beyond that. And you could have remedies, say contract limitations. That's a big one that's been brought around rather than the money they might win is contract limits so that no matter what, rather than you get these automatic extensions as champion or you get, uh, you know, I'm going to make you sign a seven fight contract when you're an up and coming and right on the edge of getting a title shot, which is what happens now. Instead, it could be like, hey, guess what? One year contract maximum mm. and that would change the scope because then you're looking more towards you know boxing style and then unions 
you might not even need unions at that point because people just say, okay, you know what? After a year, I'm going to go ahead and bounce over to here. Maybe I'm champion. Maybe you're not paying me enough. Guess what? I'm going to go to Bellator. That could literally happen mm -hmm. if they put those limits on contracts. So uh, it, it doesn't really move the unionization effort, but it does open some other avenues for fighter rights, so to speak. Yeah, and I mean, that's kind of why I feel like this because everyone would bring that up, right? Okay, so union yeah. stuff now, right? That makes it come really closer. And it's like, well, I, it's not too big of a step. I need to see some like actual real progress regarding that, right? And we're not quite there. This is a step forward, right? But it's not leading to that union part of uh, things. But, um, you know, just in terms of <laughs> the Dana response, you know, just what do you think about that? Like, because he's, he's obvi he, it's obviously aware. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, as someone that doesn't know anything about it, um, you know, I think the easiest pointing out that maybe he does is uh, he was disposed for this. So he was on the record, interviewed about it and disposed for the lawsuit specifically. So I know for a fact that, it you know, e either he's really not paying attention and who knows what he said or or, uh, or he knows very much about the lawsuit. And I'm thinking it's probably the latter and he's downplaying it. So, yeah, he, he is on the court record uh, answering questions about it. So <laughs> good old Uncle Dana for you. <laughs> That's pretty much uh, the M.O. So he's got to do what he's got to do. But, um, yeah, of course, you guys don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and the channel. Uh, you know, give us your thoughts on, you know, what do you think about the class action lawsuit news and, um, you know, unionization? You think that that will be a reality? It's something, you know, one day. I mean, that's something we are talking about constantly until, you know, it ever does happen. Right. Because, you know, the fighters deserve more. So uh, hopefully, hopefully good things will come out of this. But uh, yeah, just let us know what you let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, and yeah, what do you make of Dana's comments? Because it's always <laughs> fun to get reactions to uh, Dana's reactions. So uh yeah, yeah. Anything, uh, anything left to add on that one, Pat? Only other thing is, again, we're talking a possible like five years before they, <laughs> before things move before so one slow. court even technically <laughs> hears it. Yeah, I know. Like technically, the way that that the appellate court works, it could be a long time before they even just hear it, and that's that's just on class certification. So buckle in i know everyone's saying this is huge news it, it, it's big i will say that but it's, it's, it's notable <laughs> yes notable but uh yeah it's not gonna get resolved anytime soon oh and one other thing the fighter cuts this has nothing to do with it nothing i've seen that a lot like oh it makes sense that they're cutting fighters mm -hmm. nope no again this will take years it's been six years already and this will take at least another even if it, the appellate court was to hear it tomorrow and say, nope, we're striking that down. Let's start moving towards tri trial. You're talking about another several years before it even gets through that process. Nothing to do with the fighter cuts. Fighter cuts are Endeavor being in tons of trouble. It it's bad news. This is separate from that. That is important. Don't get sucked into that. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's, that's all I got. So.